G'day everyone, welcome to Measure Twice, Cut Once, the uh, the very last show for season three. And my mind, time flies when you're having fun. I'm Dirk from Sumo's Projects. Uh, I can be found on Facebook, uh, Instagram and also YouTube. And uh, along for the journey on this uh, very last show for episode three is a man who's been working seven days straight, 24 hours a day. He's a bit dusty, he's a bit angry, but he's, uh, he's not a bad bloke, so I'll say good day to Chris. Yeah, good day, Dirk. Yeah, dusty and angry. Yeah, I've got every right to be. I'm getting old, so I'm allowed to be grumpy. But uh, here we are for another show, um, the last one for the year, like you mentioned. So, um, what do you think we should uh, talk about first up? I think we'll uh, we'll uh, do the usual. What did we do last week? So, what did we do last week, Dirk? Yeah, we had a we had a uh, ripper show last week. Chris had some uh, very important people in the. In the community, give us a chop out. But we've got another show to do today, so maybe we yeah. should uh, talk about that. What do you reckon? Well, we should, but we should make mention of a, a few things. Um, we have got our um, partners in crime to the show. Yes, yes. So we can't forget this, Chris, because we've got a big no. announcement, all right? No, no, now, we have to, yeah. We have Hammeru Nathan uh, up in Brisbane. We have Scott from Custom Creations in Brisbane. And also Mind Matter Create. Uh, he's in Sydney and he's our new Dave, partner. Yeah, Dave. And, yep. Now, Chris, these kind folks have given us um, an opportunity. Uh, they're, they're giving up a hundred, about a $100 voucher each. So there's Ooh. three prizes of $100. And, so I'm getting $300 uh, worth of vouchers this time around. No, I, I, I know the, um, I've got the, the key to your padlock, to your letterbox. So, <laughs> that you think I'm on top of things here, mate? Oh, jeez, I never but, win anything. Oh, well, you, you win a lot. Um, <laughs> we're gonna po- <laughs> we're gonna pose a question, folks. All right, now, if you've been paying attention all season number three, this question is what brand of CNC does Chris have? Ooh, yeah, yeah. should I let the cat out of the bag now or? No, no, leave it in there, mate. No. Leave it in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we want we want um, three correct answers, and we're going to put them on one of those fancy wheels, I think, Chris, and make yep. the announcement next week as to who are the prize winners. So that's uh, something to look forward to for, you know, and it's a big thank you from for all the people who have uh, supported Measure Twice yes. once this season sure. once again. So mm-hmm. thank you for everyone. Yep. So, yeah, we have got a show today. And, yep. Um, We've got two special guests on today. Yeah. Well, one special guest and just one guy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, you can't say that. <laughs> no, you're right. It's a good thing they can't hear us, eh? Hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're probably laughing their head off. Going, Which one is it? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, um, I think we should just hook straight into it. So um, what do you say we, uh, we bring him in and have a chat to him? Sounds like a plan. All right, let's do it. Yeah, Chris, we have got a really good show today because we wanted to uh, draw some makers who, who do things a little bit different on uh, Measure Twice Cut Once. And when I say different, they're, they're makers of quality, but they, uh, they're actually instrument makers. And um, this is something that's pretty interesting as a, you know, you don't know, I don't personally know too many people who can make a, an instrument from scratch and actually make it work. So w- without further ado, I want to introduce from all the way from the UK, uh, Chris Franklin. G'day, Chris. Hiya. Yeah. How's it going? Yeah. How are you, mate? Right. And also, um, <laughs> all the way from uh, 20 minutes away from you, Chris, uh, he has got an accent, and I don't know which part of the uh, the Yarra he's from, but uh, it's uh, it's uh, the, the wonderful Mr. Phil Shinbine from the Shinbine Drum Company. <laughs> G'day, Phil. How are you, mate? Hello, gentlemen. How are we? We're good, thank you. So far, so good, man. Look, let's let's <laughs> let's, uh, let's get right into the nitty gritty of it, gentlemen. We're going to ask you a very hard hitting question to start with, Chris. Number two, we're going to ask you give us a little bit of your background and your bio in, as far as the making sphere goes, mate. Yeah, uh, I kind of I only really started four or five years ago when I was a uh, 
just fumbling around in the garage trying to find something to do and uh, I found an old guitar of mine that was broken so I thought well, I can fix this and uh, yeah so I've worked out how to fix it um, worked out there's a lot more to it than I thought it was and uh, kind of got addicted <laughs> after that <laughs> and I didn't own hardly any tools then and now I've got a shed full so that's how I got uh, right. started off. And, and have you, um, were you into repairs of guitars or did you have anything to do with them in the, in prior to, you know, making your own guitars? No, no, not really. I kind of, um, I kind of forgot all about guitars for about 20 years. And then, like I said, I just found my old guitar in the garage, picked it up and got addicted to uh, playing with it. So uh, I'm, I'm better at making them than I am playing. So I think I'm, maybe I'm compensating that. <laughs> I was going to actually ask the question, do you, do you play the guitar? badly but yeah i do a bit yeah <laughs> i know i play it badly i've got a um a guitar sitting in the corner that's uh, been collecting dust for about the last two years so yeah i i play badly <laughs> fair enough yeah i mean dirk did the um scrapwood challenge which is why i put this one up here so that's the guitar i built for the scrapwood challenge you did and that you caught me just on the wave of getting into it again so that was good timing so Ooh. yeah and, and, and he, you know, he belts out some good riffs, Chris. A bit of a bit of hard rock sort of stuff, and that's what yeah, yeah. got him got him onto the show. <laughs> All right. Well, I might, um, we might get him to uh, play out the show at the end. Oh God, no, that's no. it. I, I always figure if you play fast enough, no one can tell you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if you play it wrong yeah. enough, it's jazz. Yeah. <laughs> so, Phil, um, give us a little bit of a description or rundown of your background as far as um, becoming a drum maker or being a maker in general. How did that all start for you, mate? Well, uh, my dad did uh, flooring and finished trimming. Uh, so lots of really fiddly carpentry stuff. And if it wasn't perfect, it was garbage. Uh, so I kind of came up doing that in that world. But uh, the first drum I ever touched uh, when I was 12 years old, I broke. Uh, and being a kid, I didn't want to get in trouble, so I fixed it before anybody noticed. Um, I didn't do a very good job, but I did well enough that I didn't get in trouble. So I've been kind of doing that ever since, um, getting things just good enough to <laughs> get it across the line, you know. Uh, and eventually, at some point, the two paths kind of merged, um, and I took uh, the the woodworking and finishing and whatnot skills I learned from my dad combined them with the drum stuff and uh, you know here I am I'm gonna ask the question as well Phil um, do you play the drums I do yep uh, I study drums at the university uh, what was called Malaspina at the time but is now Vancouver Island University on the west coast of Canada um, and I toured the world playing uh, as small combo stuff for the most part um, and uh, met a lady in my travels and ended up down here uh, and I played with a band called the, the Bon Scots for a while. Uh, and that was just great fun. Yeah. And it's not an ACDC tribute act. It's <laughs> yeah, anyway, but anyway, uh, yeah, it was really fun. You can find them on YouTube, but, <laughs> uh, since then I've just kind of been playing for myself in, in my own, um, little office here, uh, and doing my, with my own designs and, and whatnot. So yes. Okay. <laughs> In short, yes. Okay. <laughs> and Chris, uh, we know we know everything you tackle in as far as uh, trying to construct something. There's set certain certain set of uh, skills required, aren't there? Like um, you know, you build cabinets. Uh, obviously, there's a the technique to making cabinets. Um, so, Chris, number two, are there any particular skill sets that you find? Uh, were necessary to be able to make a guitar as far as because you, you you you're making the shape of it and then you're introducing uh, fretboards and you know strings mm. and all that sort of thing is that is that something that takes a long time to actually get your head around yeah there's various stages to it i think if you're beginning then just if you build a body and forget about the rest of it then you, most people listening to this will be able to do that anyway. If you can build a breadboard or a chopping board, then most of the skills are there. You're laminating wood together, you're putting roundovers on, you're maybe making cavities for the handles. So the basic woodworking skills that's there. Um, the confusing bit is the electronics, because I don't understand the wiring. So I always have to look up the diagrams for that. But So yeah, the skills, you've got your woodworking, there's some carving involved, depending on the guitar on the neck, or 
and then basic metal work trying to file down the ends of the uh, fretboard. And then once you've done that, then there's quite a lot of setup where you've got to mess around trying to make it look perfect. But yeah. Is are that, there, that... Uh, uh, sorry, are there, there measurements um, when, when you're making a guitar, are there measurements that you, you can't change or is it? Yeah, well, definitely. There is? Yeah. Okay. Between the, the nut at the top, which you can't see there, and the bridge, that has to be, you have to decide what that is when you're making the guitar. I mean, there are Fender and Gibson and PRS have what they've decided is the right for them. And then the spread of the frets between the two distances, uh, they're, they're calculators online. I would never try and work it out. But um, yeah, they have to be exactly precise, really. And then you have to be, um, there's a lot of uh, <laughs> measuring twice when you have to align everything over the uh, fretboard to make sure. I've made a few guitars where the strings aren't over the neck. Um, are there any copyright uh, things with guitars? Say, so, you know, you've got Jack, um, is it Jackson who made the Flying V, I think, or uh, Les Paul. You know, are there any types of things you have to consider when replicating a guitar? Um, Gibson, for instance, will go after their body shapes, but I don't know how much luck they've had trying to stop people from doing that. Um, most body shapes seem to be up for grabs. The shape of the headstock, let me just bring that down. The shape of this can be trademarked because that's kind of the identity of the guitar, so which the bit that makes it more recognizable. So yep. you wouldn't go, copy, you wouldn't copy someone's headstock if you were trying to sell something. If you're making something for yourself, then do what you want, really. But. <laughs> and over to you, Phil, what are there any um, sort of special skills needed? You know, like a, I suppose you say you see a drum drums as being something that's uh, one bit that's sort of rounded over, you know, to make a, I don't know, a snare or or is there lamination work involved or can you, you tell a little bit yeah. about the particulars? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's three basic ways to make a, um, a, a wooden drum shell, right? Uh, the apply lamination way, which is kind of Ludwig and everybody do, right? Uh, the, the major companies do because it's cost next to nothing to do, you know. Um, and then there's uh, stave construction, like a like a barrel, and then there's uh, like a segmented, like bricks in a well, I guess, right? Um, those use more timber and less glue, uh, but they, they are very insanely particular, right? Um, like, for instance, which way do I gotta go here? This one here, this white one that I made, uh, that's a 210 piece drum shell. That's seven 30 piece, um uh rings right and each individual one is six degrees on either side so that it lines up right and if you're off by a tenth of a degree then you've essentially mm. added a whole nother uh segment to the ring right to make it close up properly so you have to be precise with uh, with the angles on your cuts other than that it's just fairly uh basic router work uh and and timber finishing really Okay. Is there any any particular timber that you use for it, or does anything? Yeah, I, I suppose you can't use like plywood to do it. Funny you say that. Actually, that white one is plywood, <laughs> but you <laughs> cut vertically into segments. I, I made that drum specifically to break every single rule I could think of. Uh, it's a sixteen-inch snare drum. Most are fourteen. Uh, it's uh, a segmented shell, but each individual segment is made out of plywood on its side. You know, uh, but generally speaking, uh, you want to use hardwoods, right? Um, the harder, the better, generally. Uh, they'll project more. They'll absorb less sound, so you get a, a bigger, louder sound. Um, and Australian timber are actually beautiful for making drum shells out of because the trees here are stupidly hard. <laughs> They're just ridiculous. You know, um, like I can't, like back home, there's maple and walnut and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I was cutting a piece of uh, rock maple, quote unquote, the other day. And it was like zip straight through my table saw. No problem. No problem. <laughs> you know, and then I switched to, you know, some of the gums that I got lying around and it's just struggling. My, my saw was just like, I am not designed for this. You know, do you um do you have to have any special glues for putting the drums together? Because if they're too soft, would it absorb too much impact or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, generally, um, it's like everything. Type on three just works for everything, you know. Um, depending uh, depending on which construction method you're using, right? 
uh, some sometimes with stave shells, uh, if you've got the depending on which way the grain's running, if you're going if you're gluing into end grain or something, you might need to do a layer of poly or something uh, like a polyurethane glue first, and then you know let that cure and sand it flat so that it's not as absorbent, you know, and then glue it up normally. But it's just general basic woodworking stuff. If you're aware of where the grain is going, you can make a drum. It's not that hard. All the metal stuff you buy, you don't you don't forge it. And, and in the world of drum making, uh, like I asked um, Chris, uh, do you have to be uh, concerned yourself with um, copyrights as well as far as, you know, what you make? Does that uh, have an issue with another drum company? Not or, really. Uh, um, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, outside of kind of branding and, and logos and whatnot, not really. You know, uh, at the end of the day, it's a cylinder with a, with a membrane stretch over it that you smash with a stick you know what i mean um some people get very particular uh, about their bearing edges right so uh the, the kind of chamfered edges on the top and bottom of the drum shell um some people have trademarked them before but that is an incredibly uh expensive and fiddly process and you can change something slightly and the the patent is irrelevant right um but i've seen like uh, there are some people that have uh, patented combinations of things, right? So like a 45 and a 30 on the top and like a rounded on the bottom, that particular combination people have patented. But for the most part, it's just the Wild West. You know, most people just go with a straight up 45 um, on either side, top and bottom. Uh, and that only became the standard because it's the most common chamfer bit in the world. Hmm. Is making symbols a completely different discipline then? Or? Completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, symbol making is all about the metallurgy and... Um, knowing exactly how to smash the thing, you know, or buying a, a giant machine that does it for you, like Zildjian do. Zildjian don't actually hand hammer anything anymore. Um, but uh, th like this one here is completely hammered by hand. Uh, and this bit here was lathed out, you know, um, and the, it was made in Turkey where they're supposed to be made. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's a whole completely different planet. Um, I'm starting to get into the, the design side of symbols. But not so much the making of them, you know. Oh. Yeah. yeah. No, I heard they started making symbols in Turkey as to scare the opposition in war. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Terrifying yeah. noises, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but they're they're slightly more uh, entertaining than you know bagpipes. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. I don't like bagpipes. I like not as much fun to jump on though. <laughs> yeah, me too. I played in the pipe band for years. I'm just yeah. <laughs> they're they're more fun to jump on than symbols, I suppose. So I I used to I used to uh, have a, a flatmate, a housemate. Um, he, he was a drummer in a heavy metal band, but he um, so he he be practicing, and I'd be getting off the train. I could hear him about half a kilometre away. You know, just the beats, like it was double bass. Oh, absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah, and oh, so yeah, Tama Tama drum kit with two bass drums, and I think he used yep. Zildjian yeah cymbals and all that sort of gear, but. Man, it's loud. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, at the end of the day, the drums were the first telecommunications network, right? Like they they were used to signal everything from, you know, miles and miles apart, you know, like you're on the other side of town and they need to hear you, you know, off you come running, do your thing, you know. Well, you know, can you hear the drums Fernando sort of thing? Oh. <laughs> you know, there was something in the air that night. <laughs> Here we go. Edit, 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 <laughs> edit, Chris, edit, Chris, edit, 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 edit. Hoss normally uh, jumps into a tune when you start making up a, you know, some titles. Yeah, no, I, right. I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket, so I'm not going to be doing any singing tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. All right, moving right along, Dirk. Come on, ask another question. Yes, Hoss. Look, we've had a few shows and been talking about specialised um, types of tools and things like, you know, we all buy tools that are necessary for our applications. But um, I, I think Chris, uh, Chris number two in England, are there any specialised types of tools you need to be able to make a, a guitar work? And uh, is there anything like specific that you would purchase to build one? No, not really. Um you can start with the most basic of woodworking tools. If you want to cut the shape out, you can use a jigsaw and sandpaper. Um, 
you want metalwork files rather than woodworking files to sort out the fret ends. Um, but no, there's nothing really, really that specialist you want to use. Just, yeah, cutting, sanding, planing. Yeah, so do you, do you make guitars to order? So have, have people ordered your guitars? Um, most, yeah, I've got a few on order, uh, mostly by friends at the moment. But, um, yeah, so I'm building exactly what they want rather than... So, to... yeah, so like Mark Knopfler hasn't given you a call and said, listen, I need a, a Ridgy Dig special guitar or anything like that? <laughs> no, no, no. I think I... Ridgy, what now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I did make one to try and get the attention of a band called Therapy, but all, all I got was a clap on my post on Instagram and... <laughs> Move on from there. Yeah, I, I did. I did mention um, some time ago to you, Chris, about you know if uh, Adrian Smith or you know any of the yeah. Maiden boys were interested in some of your guitars. You haven't got a call from them? No, not yet. No, I do have an idea for a Dave Murray guitar, so I think uh, maybe I'll make a video about that some point. Yeah. Phil, what about you, mate? Is there any specialised tooling, or, or do you have to say construct uh, some jigs that help you or assist you in the you know? In the, in the process of making the kit, yeah. Can you elaborate yeah. on that? Uh, it's it's all about the jigs, really. Um, I'm not a turner, in, in spite of making round <laughs> things for a living. <laughs> so uh, everything I do is on a, a different jig that goes against the the cutter on my router at the router table, right? Uh, the outside of the shell is done with a jig called a cocoa jig, which essentially just puts two plates either side of the drum shell and holds it on a piece of threaded rod, so you can turn it over the cutter. And then you crank the, the thing up a little bit and you turn it again. Um, and then it's a, it's a similar, similar kind of thing for the interior as well. Um, the vast majority of drum making actually, as I make them, you know, uh, revolves around the router table. You know, um, I've put more money into my router table setup than anywhere else in my shop. You know, uh, my table saw is a piece of crap by comparison. You know, uh, just last year I bought, I, I've dropped like, I don't know, $1,500 on my router setup. You know, uh, and I could maybe get 200 secondhand for my table saw. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's primarily router based. And okay. So, so I'll yeah. I'll ask the question now uh, of you, Phil. Um, mm -hmm. Has anyone of note um, rang you up and said, "Listen, um, I was going to say Charlie Watts, but he's not around anymore." But um, <laughs> oh, poor Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> poor Charlie. And then I was going to say Keith Moon, who's my favourite drummer. Um, but he's yep. been gone for some yep. years. Um, yeah, absolutely. Else? Give me another drummer, Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr, has he um oh. rung you up and said, Listen, I need a, a drum kit? Ah, uh, man, I would absolutely, I'd probably have a heart attack and fall on the floor, to be honest with you. If Ringo <laughs> called me, uh, he's absolutely one of my heroes, he's one of my all time favorites. Um, but oh, yeah, okay. no, not, not really. Um, not anybody that's you know internationally known. <laughs> Is that a yeah. goal to, uh, to start selling around the world? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's a goal on the horizon. You know, it's uh, it's uh, something to to work towards, I suppose. Yeah. Well, everyone's got to have goals. You got to have goals, otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. My, uh, I actually haven't been doing much building of late, so the actual goal right now is to to find the time to get back into it. Really. You know, I've been doing a lot of repairs and mods and stuff for people the last couple of years. Start to finish, guys. I'll ask Chris first. Um, how much time do you put into constructing and building your guitars? Ooh, uh, probably for me at the moment, it's probably about a month if I dedicate the time to it. Um, you can probably get one out a lot quicker, but you obviously want glues to cure and depending on what finish you're putting on, you need good time for that to cure as well. And also because it's made of wood, well, I'm probably to get this one that's made of MDF and OSB, but <laughs> <laughs> that was all right. But um, wood will move and settle over time. So you need to obviously let the guitar sit and think about itself for a bit. Um, so, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I'd say a month is a good. Uh, also, oh, also going to depend on what sort of guitar. This is like a slab top with a carve away, a cut away, sorry. But if you're doing more like a sort of like all carved top with um, curves and all sorts of stuff, then that could add another week or two even. But yeah. Have you seen uh, some of the posts on Instagram? I think it's been in my feed. Um, people using epoxy resin to make the you know guitars out of. Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking of doing. I've got a few ideas for epoxy guitars. Um, 
maybe not the whole thing, but maybe kind of uh, sections of it, or maybe cut holes into a guitar and put little scenes in there with little figures and then put it up. I thought That's might be nice. some interesting, uh, isn't it? yeah. Little, little toys embedded in the resin or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, if I ordered a guitar from you, uh, how long would it take you to make it f f from start to finish? I know you said about a month, but um, from start to finish, how long would it basically take you? I, w I wouldn't, I personally I wouldn't be comfortable saying less than a month. I mean, you could probably not run out in five days of a, of a simple construction, but. But the second you hit a power cord on it, it'd probably fall apart, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the second you open the case. <laughs> I thought you meant trip over a power cord, but you meant playing a power cord. <laughs> yeah, playing the power cord, yeah. <laughs> Tripping over a power cord wouldn't be good. Yeah. Um, but, again, it depends. Telecasters and Les Paul Juniors are very simple slab top construction guitars, and they are meant to be beaten around on the road, so... I guess maybe the longer it takes, the more fancy it is, <laughs> the more likely it is to collapse. Yeah, because I, I, I'm assuming that, yeah, like, the, if you use some really exotic exotic timbers, um, you'd need to let them acclimatize and um, and and do all of that. I suppose that'd be the same with the drum kits as well. But uh, with the guitars, I mean, you can't sort of work on it and then glue it up straight away. You got to let it do its thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or you tend to maybe use something. Uh, with like a an even grain as a bulk of the guitar, and then put the exotic top on top of it. Mm. So mm. you wouldn't trust the entire construction to something too weird and exotic. But. So like a lamination. Yeah, yeah, maybe oh, like okay. a cent centimeter on the top of uh, the exotic wood. Okay, yeah, uh, more uh, like a uh, fancy uh, veneer on the top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, keeps the cost down as well, but as well as, <laughs> as, well as making it stable. So Chris Franklin, if built by Chris ever ordered a guitar off you. Um, I would tell him that it would take you about 18 years to make because he doesn't pay for things. <laughs> right. You know, I want one for free. I want a free yeah, one. Yeah, there you go. For free. <laughs> as long as it's yellow and black and comes in a, <laughs> a dual yeah, yeah. box. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be hitting yeah. you up next, Bill, so I don't talk too much. <laughs> yeah, well, if, someone came, if someone came to me and said they're playing in Wembley Stadium in a week's time, I'd make it in a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and Mr. Mr. Shimboy, um, the, uh, the the time taken to make one of your uh, drum sets or a, a particular type of drum, how, how yeah. long would that take you? Uh, it it depends very much on the drum, right? Uh, if I'm making the shell and it's a stave or segmented shell, um, then like Chris just said, there's a lot of drying time and curing time of things. Um, and the finish, if it's a like a gloss, like a two pack nitro uh, lacquer on top, it'll take forever to cure before I even get around to actually polishing it, you know. Um, but if it was just a fairly straightforward uh, stave shell with like a like a rubbed in oil finish, I could probably get it out the door in, in, a, in the same, in about a month, you know, um, if I was going at it, you know, properly, you know, <laughs> if I wasn't only working two hours a day because, you know, of family obligations and whatnot but well, yeah uh if i was doing it properly i could probably smash out you know uh six drums in the time that it takes to make the one because of the waiting time which is funny i could probably make you six drums in the same amount of times it would take to make you one but yeah okay. so do, do you do you only um only make the snare drum or do you do the whole kit uh i do whatever people would like to pay me to do Essentially, that sounds very mercenary, but um, <laughs> I can do anything from a, like a tiny little uh, snare drum all the way up through the roof to your big old bottom style um, bass drums as well, uh, and everything in between, uh, and and some percussion stuff as well. Um, there's a, a, a box drum called the Cajon. I've made a ton of those. Um, I've made uh, all kinds of like uh, Latin percussion stuff, um, like uh, up above my shoulder, I keep pointing this out the wrong way. <laughs> Up here, there's a, a merengue huira scraper. You know, I made that. I'll make you pretty much. He's dropping out of it there. You're dropping out of Short it answer? there, Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We got as far as the scraper, and then I think you started going. So. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. All I right. kind of got off the, the, the deep end there. 
Yeah. So, yeah. so to make to make a free drum kit for me, how long would that take? The rest years. of your life, Chris. <laughs> 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 I tell you what, uh, you buy the timber and the hardware, and I'll put you. I'll put together a drum together for you. Why not? I've got I've got a ton of pallets in the garage now. I'll drop them off at your place tomorrow. <laughs> no, drop them off at Mark's house. <laughs> I'm not interested in pallets. <laughs> <laughs> Although his new uh, dust extraction setup, I really like what he's done there. That's really cool. Uh, oh, that he big, put out a video uh, yesterday. Thing that he did. Yeah. The big pink thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he uh, really essentially awesome. built a drum. He oh. built pretty much a bass oh, yeah, drum. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. Shame he had to use pallets to do it, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's been really... I like his, his technique of making bricks out of the pallets to then build up to build bigger things is really good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you know he's doing well there. Yeah. Any more questions, so, Dirk? Uh, yes, Hoss. Um, guys... This is a chance for you to sell what you make. So, where's the best places you find that you can advertise your um, guitars and drums? We'll start, Chris. Where do you? Where, what's your socials? And you know, I, I mean, we know that you're on YouTube, but are there any other places you can suggest or um, think... recommend for people who are makers to be able to sell you know, guitars or similar type things? Yeah, I think Instagram is a really good place because you can then show behind the scenes kind of build up build up yourself because when somebody's buying a custom guitar or maybe custom drum i don't know they're kind of paying for the person as well as the instrument if that makes sense mm -hmm. so they want to be in, they want to be invested in who you are so with instagram you can kind of build up a picture of who you are and show, um, show what you do there and then also instagram's got the dm capacity as well so people can get in touch with you directly then mm. um so yeah that that's where i would send people to find me but. and and Phil, yourself, what do you, uh, what tools do you have in yeah. your space um, for advertising? It's funny. I've been, I've been trying to spruik. That's the word you guys use. I've been trying to spruik these things for years. Uh, there's been many platforms over the years that have come and gone, um, or that I've gone to and then walked away from because they did absolutely nothing. Um, like uh, Etsy, eBay, mm -hmm. Gumtree, uh, Reverb, like just all of these places where people buy and sell stuff do absolutely nothing. Like I've, I've just never gotten the knack of those particular places. The only place that I really have any success is actually Facebook marketplace. Okay. It's the most ridiculous and common place ever. But if you say, this is what I made, here's a YouTube video to how I made it. And you put the ad out there, people will buy it. Yeah. Provided your pricing isn't too over the top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> problem with reverb and ebay and places like that or etsy is it's often a race to the bottom where people are just trying to outprice each other so yeah. absolutely mm. yeah i've noticed yeah. i've noticed that with um when i'll make me pens you know um i, I tried etsy uh, very briefly i tried it and that just didn't work um marketplace yeah. like you said phil marketplace i've sold a ton of pens on marketplace it's absolutely people, taken over for sure yeah and people yeah. are quite happy to pay the price so I have to look there. It's usually a good place to find uh, furniture to break down for other projects, but I've never actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to find pallets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, Chris, uh, Hoss, you, you have any questions you'd like to ask the gentleman before we um, depart this? No, no, look, you've, you've asked all the questions. Um, uh, I, I was more. I liked to to know uh, how they how, how they got into the 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 making of like the guitars and the drums. Did I just hit my microphone again? The making of the guitars and the drums. Um, I've I actually bought a um, a guitar kit about ten years ago, where you <laughs> bought the body and the um, and the neck and everything, and all you had to do was glue them together and then paint it whatever you wanted. It's right. still in two pieces in my workshop. I, I just haven't got around to doing it. Um, and drums, well, I wouldn't even begin to know where to start to make one of those. So I, I have a lot of um, uh, respect for, for people like yourselves who actually make these things, you know. It's, it's a specialised craft as far as I'm concerned. You Absolutely. Know, like you, you know, I think you, you're, um, you're keeping that, that art alive, I think. That's, that's the, the main mm, thing yeah. about it. Yeah, thanks. It's funny you say that. Um, I'm in the middle of making a cabinet for my workshop, and it's terrible. 
<laughs> so, you know, uh, I've seen you do a fair amount of like closet fit out stuff and, uh, you know, you're very good at it. So yeah. um, maybe not very good, but practice makes perfect. Uh, well, you're very then, good at making it look right. <laughs> that, that, it's all smoke and mirrors, mate. Smoke and mirrors. I was going to say that kick, that kick guitar Hoss has uh, got in his shed, it's going to end up being uh, smoke on the bonfire. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. Who knows? Uh, yeah. Maybe you could start an all-star band here, eh? We'll just have to find our, uh, <laughs> we have to find our forte, Chris. Uh, yeah, the, spoon, yeah. the spoons, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> the spoons. I can play the palette with. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you both for you know um, giving up some of your time to be on the show with us tonight and uh, just give an insight into into your worlds. You know how you, how you go about doing things. Good to finally speak to you. Too. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Chris. What what time is it in uh, England now? It's probably about quarter to ten in the morning. So, oh, that's not too bad. That's all right. Yeah, it's about ten. Bad. Bad. Yeah. It's not like it's past your bedtime or anything. Or... No, 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 <laughs> not yet. It's almost past mine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm getting close. I'm getting close. It's like seven on. p.m. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah, it's already dark. That's that's yeah. But anyway, Frank, thank you again, gentlemen. Uh, did yep. you uh, you have anything else you want to say, Dirk? No, no, I wholeheartedly thank you very much. It's interesting to hear uh, your your take on what you do. And, you know, I, I hope that um, people in the uh, audience of Measure Twice, Cut Once can see that, you know, that type of making is alive and continued on in a traditional format. So, no, that's that's really bonzo. And I, like Chris said, thank you very much for giving up your time on, on the show today. We appreciate mm. that. Thanks for having me. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, cool. Chris, mate, what a, what a ripping show that's been. Um, our very last show for season three. And yep. um, a big thanks going out to Phil Shinbein from Phil, uh, Phil Shinbein Drum Co. Shinbein no, it's Shinbein Drum Co. Shinboner, yep. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a talented uh, drum maker by the sounds of that. And uh, we'd like to also thank um, the wonderful Chris Franklin, who's a uh, – what, what is the term? For a guitar maker, is it a luthier? It's a luthier, a luthier. luthier. Yeah. What's a luthier? Not luthier. It, luthier. T H. Luthier. 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 Yeah, yeah. That's what he is. Yeah, I know. I know what he is. Yeah. Well, I go on about it. All right. So. Well, yeah. So announcements to make for this very last show. We are tentative, tentatively looking at coming back. <laughs> Chris, when are we coming back? Um, you know, you know I've, I've got a date. I've got a date set for the seventh of November. That's when season four is going to come back. Uh huh. That gives us six weeks. All right. All right. So in between, so during our hiatus, um, we're going to be uh, announcing the winners of the um, the giveaway. Yep. And. Um, we might even uh, just put out maybe a, a video of the bloopers for season three, a collection of bloop, 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 bloopers for season yeah. three, um, and something else maybe. You know, if you if you yeah. want to do some editing for a change. Oh, don't start going down this road, pal. <laughs> hey, I do the hard yards. I get the the, the crew on board. Yeah, you got to uh, make phone calls. I've got to sit in front of a computer for eight hours a day. You did volunteer. Um, we would like to spend a, <laughs> send a special thanks out to our partners, Hamaru, uh, Custom Creations and My Matter Create for donating yep. $100 vouchers each. So there'll be three yep. prizes. Yep. And um, the question is, what brand of CNC has Chris got in his uh, workshop? So if they've been uh, paying attention, I think it'll be an easy one to answer, mate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to say. No, don't, don't you say, mate. Don't you say. Yeah, well, I'm not going to say because I can't win it anyway, so it's not fair. No, no. But maybe you could give it away. What about that? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't work? give nothing away, pal. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, a big thank you to everyone who's been part of the show for season three. Look, if you first time you're watching or you want to recommend Measure Twice, Cut Once, please do. Uh, subscribe to the show. 
share it around, tell your mates, you know, it's um, it's all the merrier and it, it helps us come back bigger and stronger so we can present you, you know, the, the type of quality show we, we think we are doing. So, yep. Chris, I think we've done, we're doing all right at the moment. And I think we're doing all right. Um, the one thing I'd like to say is hopefully by the time we get back in, uh, in six weeks' time, uh, we'll be out of lockdown and... Yeah. We might be able to shoot the show from um, from either your workshop or my workshop, depending on where we are. So, uh, but uh, I would also like to personally thank um, all our guests over the last uh, twelve weeks. I think they did a great job, and um, and they really made the shows special. Yep, and maybe a couple of little subtle changes happening season four, which are. Uh, make for better presentation as well. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We've got to we've got to look at we'll the see. content that we're we're um, we're bringing out and uh, see if we can improve on it. Too right. Hmm. So having said all that, I think it's time to just about sign off. And uh, as I always do, I'm going to say hooroo. <sighs> Bye for now. Now, when I say going live, um, it's just recording. We're not actually going out onto the um, okay. the interweb. That's just for me. Oh, um, fancy! So when, when when you answer when you answer your question, just we all shut up for about two seconds, and then move on. All right, I'm, I'm trying something different in yep. the. Uh, in the edit stage. She's okay. okay. It's not a free one, so I persevered with it because I paid for it. But <laughs> um, okay. I got yeah. Final Cut Pro and I didn't pay for it. <laughs> Wait, how did you get how did you get it for free? Oh, uh, it's not what you know, mate, it's who you know. <laughs> All right. Now it's in the calendar. The one that you have access to, it's in the calendar. You know your high tech <laughs> shit. It's high tech. It's a Calendar, how high tech can it be? Look, 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 look. this is all around right <laughs> Hundreds of years people have in this. <coughs> I blame myself for this shit. I really do. <laughs> <laughs>